hello all welcome back to my channel this is feature view with another nail video and in this video i am doing a set of really i think simple ombre nails ombre and glitter nails it's my birthday month so tell me happy birthday happy birthday to all the other february birthdays it is our month so in this video specifically, I wanted to talk about how to do a tri-color ombre. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a tri-color ombre on three of my nails. And this is going to be a little tutorial about how to do it. Um, I chose three pastel colors for this. I think that pastel really works well for this. Choosing three colors that are like three vivid colors, three pastel colors, I think that is the key. Because if it's like a bright color and a pastel color, um they might not blend as well into each other they might kind of look funny so i chose um three pastel colors for this as you can see i'm going with the first color which is this mint kind of uh green and i'm going to put that on the tips of these three nails the key is to work thin and to make sure that you blend the portion that's going to go against the next color so the free edge is um as thick as I want it to be, as pigmented as I want it to be. But up there towards the top of the color, I'm going to make sure to blend that to make sure that it is flat and it's not a there's not a harsh line of demarcation. That is one of the keys to um, getting any type of ombre to really stick the way you want it to, is to make sure that there is not a harsh line of demarcation because you will be able to see that. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. You will be able to see it. So after I've done the um, bottom color on these three nails i'm gonna go in with the second color the second color is this blue it's a lighter well i wouldn't say it was a necessarily a light blue but it's it, it's a blue <laughs> it's a pale pastel blue and as you can see i'm just going in with a little bit of the blue and it's going to be in the middle i didn't want to use too much of it because um we have to save space for the other color but you want to use just enough and the very first thing that i do is to blend it i want to make sure that it blends down with that green color and then i can take it up a little bit higher with another bead and make sure that that bead is flat against the nail because again it's going to have to blend in with the the last color that we're going to use but the first thing i do is blend it in with the green and to do that you want to use light strokes do not brush hard if you brush hard you will brush the color down the nail and there won't be a pretty ombre um, I'm not doing a long ombre this is just um, a real simple ombre right there as the colors meet and it's seamless why is it seamless? Because I didn't um, brush hard. I brushed really soft. And as you can see, I'm working with the colors. Um, they're pretty runny. You can, um, I think that's good to work with it semi runny. You don't want it to set too much because if it's set too much, it's not gonna really blend nicely. It's gonna be thicker. So um, working with it quickly is also um, good. As you can see, I'm going in with the last color a part of the ombre and it is purple this is a lilac purple all of these colors work really well together and i think that's part of what makes this ombre look good is that these colors actually look good together they, they make sense together they're all pastel colors they're all pale colors so i went to put the lilac near the nail bed and as you can see i am brushing it very lightly where the colors connect and I don't want to bring that color down to the green. I just want it to blend in with the blue. So I'm going to blend it very quickly right there and make sure I don't flood my cuticle. <laughs> so as you can tell, all of the colors, I applied them all kind of runny, but um, I wanted to make sure and blend them and make sure that they lied flat on the nail. When it comes to doing an ombre, you can really ombre a nail anywhere you want it to. You could do like a high ombre that's closer towards the nail bed. You could do a lower ombre that's closer towards the free edge. Because it's a tricolor ombre, I did it with kind of like an even split between the three colors. But it doesn't have to be done that way. You can make it whatever you want it to be. Um, but I thought that doing it kind of uh, simply making all three colors kind of like um, the same depth was good so that you can, you can see all of them these are very 
nice looking spring nails i think these um kind of remind me of easter those easter colors that we love so much it kind of looks like a, a mermaid as i'm going in with this glitter this glitter i call it ice or glacial and um it looks like a mermaid kind of theme that going on here that wasn't really i didn't really have mermaid in mind whenever i was doing this set but i think that the colors give that vibe it gives sea foam it gives ocean that type of thing it gives aphrodite yes yes the goddess of love just in time for valentine's day just in time for february look at that <laughs> okay back to the ombre um it is very important very 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 important that you encapsulate an ombre you want to encapsulate an ombre always why because the um blend that you're doing is on the top of the nail so whenever you go in to file the nail you will be filing away the ombre if you do not encapsulate it and that is also another reason why it's okay to work kind of runny because when um the acrylic is runnier it is thinner whenever you allow it to thicken up um it is thicker <laughs> and so you want to work thin so that you're giving yourself enough space to ombre the nail on this first finger i went um, with that glacial color over the top of it to add a little sparkle to my ombre so we have on that finger we're gonna have a tricolor ombre and then glitter on top all the other um, nails are just going to be the ombre so whenever i go in and encapsulate it that's whenever i'm adding the thickness to the nails all of the nails um the glitter acrylic that i use is in fact an acrylic so um you don't necessarily have to um, encapsulate it because it does have acrylic in it there, but I prefer to encapsulate everything. <laughs> if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Therefore, whenever I do the steps to do my nails, I do the same steps every time so that I don't mess up and forget a step. Whenever you change up your routine, you're likely to forget something. So um, I keep the same routine no matter what the style of nails that i'm doing so whenever i go in to encapsulate the ombre i am making sure that i encapsulate the entire nail we want to make sure that we preserve the work that we did i did it rather quickly this video is sped up a bit but i want to make sure that we preserve the work because it is indeed work as you can see i have encapsulated the first nail and I'm gonna go and do the same process with all of the others. Now, whenever you're working with multiple colors, whenever you're working with clear acrylic, you can sometimes get air bubbles in the acrylic. How do you avoid that? You avoid getting air bu bubbles by working with um, runnier acrylic, right? So if you're taking time to make sure that the acrylic is wet through and through you're not working with a bead that is too dry then um, you're not going to have air bubbles and one way to also ensure that i don't get air bubbles whenever i am working here is i will go and touch the dried acrylic with monomer you saw me do it just there on the middle finger i touch the acrylic with monomer so the acrylic is wet and then i'm going to go in with my clear acrylic on top of that so that there are not air bubbles through i hope that makes sense but you can go and touch your acrylic with some monomer and then go in with your bead it was a runnier bead and you can encapsulate the whole thing and you will not have air bubbles i hope all of that makes sense i also like to go in with these big kind of runnier beads because i can encapsulate an entire nail with one bead the acrylic does not run that much and i'm working with um, mamiya secret clear right here um the acrylic does not run that much that it is hard to control in doing um the entire nail with one bead and that now i did it with two beads one for the um to encapsulate the bottom ombre and then a cuticle bead that i used to encapsulate the ombre above that using one bead to do the whole thing two beads three beads four beads however many beads you use do you it all works i like to use one to two beads whenever i'm doing something like this because um, 
it's easy for me but you know do what works for you um, as you can see on the nails I have filed and buffed them now I'm going in with matte top coat because I'm gonna put some gel polish on top when you're working with gel polish you do not have to um, top coat you can use like a base coat on the nails or or you can top coat or you can use nothing on them and then go in with your gel polish but i like to because it helps to work with a clean surface so it, it adds something into it making the surface a little bit more flat buffing the surface will make it flat as well but it also works to go ahead and top coat or base coat the nails and then going in and doing what you got to do with the gel polish so on the first finger, the pointer finger, as well as the pinky finger, I'm gonna do a V French. So you're still gonna see that ombre, but then the French on top adds a little cutiness to it, adds a little something else to it. <laughs> you know, I couldn't leave it just as it is. It had to have a little something extra. And I think the French makes those two nails a little bit extra. On the middle finger, I am gonna go and outline the nail with the white gel polish and then on the two kind of accent nails i mean since all the nails are different <laughs> is there really an accent nail hmm <laughs> but on the um two nails that are entirely the glitter acrylic the white nails i'm gonna go in with blue gel polish and i'm just gonna make some like random kind of line kind of things i don't i don't know I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm going to do it. Okay, just watch. Just watch. <laughs> I'm sorry, this portion of the video is a little blurry. It's not as clear as I would have liked it to be, but I couldn't tell that as I was recording, so I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. But the lines are haphazard. There's no uniformity to them at all. I just put lines where I wanted them to go because I wanted something to go over the glitter, and I wanted the glitter to shine through. I don't know it was just it was very ethereal it was very mermaid-esque it was fun it was it was pretty what do you think would you wear these nails do you like them did you learn something do you have other tips for others trying to improve their ombres let me know down below please like comment and subscribe you can follow me on instagram at watch underscore the underscore progression and i'm about to come in and top coat these nails and show you the final look i hope you like what you see if you have any comments for me please do let me know down below thank you for watching bye, -bye.